Welcome to part two in our look at the use of ciphers in Revolutionary Secrets, Cryptology in the American Revolution. In part one, we learned about simple monoalphabetic ciphers and a homophonic cipher. Now we'll move on to a more complicated system suggested by James Lovell. James Lovell from Boston was elected to the Continental Congress. Shortly thereafter, he was assigned to the Committee of Foreign Affairs, which was previously called the Committee of Secret Correspondence. He took his assignment to the committee quite seriously and stayed there for five years as other members came and went. Among Lovell's responsibilities on the committee were the writing and deciphering of dispatches. He employed a polyalphabetic substitution system. Polyalphabetic substitution was not new. The idea had been around for centuries, but Lovell preferred it to other cryptographic methods. Lovell liked systems that could be committed to memory, as they provided more security than lengthy code books or lists that had to be written down and kept. His system used the first few letters of a keyword to create the first letters of the alphabets. Then each row was numbered 1 to 27. 27 because the ampersand would also be one of the characters in the alphabets. To spell out a word such as Congress, simply find the first letter in the first column and write down the associated number, in this case 1. Find the second letter in the second column and write down its number, and so on, creating the cipher. In a polyalphabetic system, it's similar to Dumas's homophonic system, but where Dumas had several options for each plain text letter, in a polyalphabetic system, each cipher character has multiple plain text options. For example, we have two 17s. They decipher to both G and S. And because we're working with multiple plain text alphabets, the two S's in Congress have two different cipher characters, 17 and 2. This would make cryptanalysis of the messages more difficult. However, it didn't always work as well as it could have. One of the problems came from the way Lovell sent the keyword from which to create the alphabets. For example, in a message to John Adams, Lovell suggested the keyword this way. You certainly can recollect the name of that family where you and I spent our last evening together with your lady before we set out on our journey hither. Make your regular alphabets in number equal to the first sixth part of that family name. In a letter to Robert Livingston, the Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Adams complained, I know very well the name of the family where I spent the evening with my worthy friend, Mr. Blank, before we set off, and I have made my alphabet accordingly. But I am, on this occasion, as on all others hitherto, unable to comprehend the sense of the passages in cipher. He goes on to say that he knows he got some of it correct, because some of the words deciphered properly, but others didn't. He even regrets that it isn't working, because he thinks the ciphered portions are probably important. Another diplomat and member of the Continental Congress, Francis Dana, on one occasion found Lovell's message in unintelligible because he could not remember the name of the family in Charleston whose nephew rode in company with you from this city to Boston. Lovell's clue to another man instructed him to use the second and third letters of the maiden name of the wife of that gentleman from whom I sent you a little money on a lottery score. Apparently one needed to have a good memory of everyone they'd ever met, and I think it's a very good thing that keys are not sent today in this surreptitious manner, or no one would be reading any of their intended messages. Please join me in part three of our segment on ciphers in the Revolutionary Secrets, where we will see how solving British encryption aids the Continental Army in the American Revolution. Now try this revolutionary activity. Create a polyalphabetic substitution cipher using letters from a keyword. How would you convey that keyword to your friends so that others can't guess it? Send your friend a secret message using your cipher. Have fun!